At this time, I'll call the June 24th, 2021 meeting to order for the Dixon County Commission. Would you please stand and join in the flag salute? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <laughs> We've started just a, a few minutes late. We've been going over our budget this morning and we still have some things to consider on the budget. And um, so we'll probably work that some of that into the discussion of our meeting today. Um, we do not have any, well, I, maybe I'll just add that to the agenda, that, a discussion regarding the budget. And I think we'll go ahead and do that um, with that one addition um, that we'll put down under the business item, just discussion regarding hearings that we've had. And so with that amendment uh, to the agenda, I'd move that we approve the agenda as amended. Second it. We have the motion and the second for approval of the agenda is, uh, with that one addition. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The consent agenda includes the minutes of the June 17th meeting. It also includes the payroll of $583,410.62, abatements of $3,620.66. I move to approve the consent agenda. Second. We have the motion and the second for approval of the consent agenda. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We'll go to commission comments. Ron? I spent a little bit of time yesterday with the zoning people in their, uh, uh, what, what's the um, comprehensive plan? Comprehensive plan, and it went quite well. I'm, I'm learning more than I think I'm contributing, but I appreciate everybody's patience with working with me on that. But I spent a lot of, just a lot of time with the folks yesterday. And there was quite a bit accomplished. So. Okay. Craig? Yeah, I uh, had a phone call and somebody come to see me about the road damage between Trail Road and Rain Road uh, on 3400 Avenue. And I explained to them that uh, as soon as they got done with Rain Road, they would be repaving between Rain and the two miles between there. And he said, well, what if I have road damage on my trucks and my tires? And I said, you're doing that, you're going too fast. That was going to be my response. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Um, I did have a meeting at Central Kansas Mental Health uh, this past week and um, actually had uh, Connie Hubble come in uh, by Zoom and she's been very active on a state and national level on various committees. She used to be on the state school board and so on, but it was on board development and the importance of boards that work together and you know, a lot of them are just the common principles that we have, whether we're on a elected board of commission like this or a board of something like Central Kansas Mental Health, but it was very helpful. And they also continued to talk about the uh, additional needs that they have over there and um, level of activity and, um, and they're, you know, reaching out well within um, within our area here. Um, I did have someone um, at my office the other day that they had grown up in this area and, and were back visiting and do not come very often. It had been a decade or so, and they just mentioned how um, they, they felt like everything was kind of thriving and a lot of good things had happened, and they had talked to a few business people and, and were impressed with the activity in the area. and. Um, just mentioned how things, you know, some things were the same, but some things had really changed. Um, and so, um, anyway, it's it's always good to hear the impressions that people have. And, um, you know, it made me think one of the areas that we'll talk on the budget or had come up in our budget discussions is the economic development and the importance 
of Dixon County to move forward in positive ways and um, economic development to bring people here and um, have opportunities and so on. I mean, that's just an example of, of one of the many intentional activities that take place within the county um, to make things better. Okay, that's all I have on, um, we did add to the agenda and we'll get to this later, but the budget uh, process, and we've been through that earlier this morning and are gonna continue along that way. And um, that'll come up later for discussion. We do not have any petitions or proclamations. So if there's any public comment, this would be opportunity for someone to um, address the commission or have a question. And if you just notify us if you are online. Just raise your hand on the, it's called raise your hand here. So we okay. can acknowledge them. And we do have a few people that are watching, but uh, it appears that um, they're watching and listening, but do not have a comment at this time. So we'll go ahead and move on in the agenda. So at this time, we'll go to our reports of, of county officers. Brad, can you give your report, please? Okay, we'll start out with a progress report from Monday. Uh, I provided you a couple documents relating to the uh, renovation of the jail project. Uh, the, the bigger document is the up-to-date timeline that was presented by the Lake Builders. As you can see, they've got that out uh, to finish up in the first or second week of October at this point. That could always get better, most probably will get worse. Uh, about that. Uh, also in your packet is, uh, I provided you a copy of, and I know it's really small, that's the way it pre presented a copy of the change orders that we've had since day one. Many of those had to do, if you look at those with uh, stable soils and stuff that we found for the first portion of the project out there. Uh, I don't anticipate or expect to go through those today, but I wanted to give them to you. And uh, so you'd have a chance to review them and if we need to, uh, next week in the uh, work uh, study session, we can talk about those. Along with that, uh, just as a result of the issues that have come up in the last few weeks regarding the generator and electrical problems, I had, uh, with the help of Sherry and Chancey, we compiled a, a list of issues that have come up uh, resulting in change orders and extra cost. And they're primarily due to some deficiencies that we had with the original electrical engineer. and I won't go into a lot of details since we're in a public meeting and I don't want to say anything libelous, but we've been, we, we discovered a number of, of tremendously big issues that uh, were done by the original electrical engineering company that was brought on board by uh, the Goldberg Group. Uh, since that time, those issues were recognized immediately and since that time they have provided a different electrical engineer who is working with us fine and doing a good job. However, going back and still now discovering issues and one of the biggest issues that has come up is the fact that the uh, our backup generator is severely undersized when i say severely i stress severely with a capital s and an exclamation point uh, the current generator that was placed there is purchased and been on site now for nine ten months is a 200 kilowatt uh, generator which is pretty good size uh, we found out in the last week or so that uh, that will not run a lot of what needs to be run. And that it was also, uh, the original plans were uh, called for it to uh, power things like in the county attorney's office and district court that don't need to be powered because if you don't have servers and you don't have things like our freezer and walk-in cooler and stuff like that on there, um, in the jail, you know, some of those things are the priority. Worrying about office space is, is not a priority. So it's been very frustrating. Uh, the new electrical engineer has come back and said that uh, as recent as yesterday, uh, with his figures to do things the way it should be done, it's gonna take a 400 kW generator. Uh, and we're not talking a cheap item here. The generator we currently have with a transfer switch was $104,000. That's the bad news. The good news is, well, a, a little more bad news, you know, Lane County is in the process of building a jail too. It was designed by Larry and his group. Uh, 
Coincidentally, they had the same exact problem we had. Same engineer did theirs. Same issues surfaced, and as recent as uh, May, in their meetings, I've watched their commission meetings online. Uh, they dealt with the same issue, and uh, theirs came to $194,000 change order, but they were going to have to swap out the generator and get one. Although they hadn't ordered theirs, but it was going to take a generator to cost $194,000 more than what their guaranteed maximum price was. And uh, after some discussions in their meeting, they refused to pay it and told the architect it was on him. And the architect, Larry, uh, uh, in the long run, went back and, and uh, got the electrical engineering firm to agree to pay that expense. When this surface Monday, uh, I was not happy at all. As a matter of fact, I was probably very uh, unprofessional in our meeting. As a matter of fact, I know I was very unprofessional in our meeting. I didn't throw anything, although I was close to it, but I did say some choice words. Uh, I sent an email off to uh, Larry uh, Monday afternoon. He called me Wednesday, no, Tuesday afternoon, expressed his apologies, wanted me to relay to you, the commission, that they will take care of anything that's wrong. It will not cost us anything. That he has consulted with uh, Ross and Barazzini, which is the electrical engineering firm, and they were prepared to cover all of the damages and everything that was done improperly up to the tune of several hundred thousand dollars. They don't know what it's going to be yet, but the uh, the damages are on them. So he, he wanted to uh, very, uh, uh, very sternly express his uh, apologies that this has taken place. It should have never taken place. Uh, one, you know, we do have a good engineer on, on the project now, which I agree with. I think Mr. Wheeler is doing an excellent job. But although he's cleaning up mess that his predecessor, who by the way is no longer with their company, I probably goes without saying, um, uh, had left him. So we're trying to get this cleaned up. We've got a special meeting tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock uh, down here at the jail to go through the options. Um, we will end up when it's done having ample capacity backup. Uh, we will have it corrected and things will be done properly and it shouldn't cost us any more, any more uh, money. The downside is it's probably going to cost us a little more time because we don't know how long it's going to take to get a, another generator. But it is what it is. So uh, we we still we're operating, you know, under under the, the the assumptions that hopefully in the next three to four weeks we'll be able to get the jail open, transfer over, and and, and continue to progress. The generator that that is there now will continue to be used, and whether we swap it out or whether we go with a second generator that runs the courthouse, and this one stays and runs the jail and the sheriff's department, which is an option, that may very well be the quickest and, and least expensive and the cleanest solution. So with all that said, uh, I wanted to make sure that you guys were aware of that, and I, I could have sent it in an email, but I wanted to tell you in person so that not only you, but the public knows that we are diligently watching these things and trying to stay on top of them. And, and uh, so. Well, thanks for handling that. And sometimes maybe some strong words or being expressive is a good thing because it. I was trying to needed the bull by the horn. I'm surprised the rest of the staff in the sheriff's department couldn't hear me if they could. So uh, I actually got up and left the room because I was afraid I was going to do something that I wouldn't regret. But I knew coming back to you and asking for another, or telling you it was going to cost us several hundred thousand dollars more above what you know, wasn't an option. And, and, you know, our taxpayers have faith in this. It's like our previous conversation. We, we convinced them to support this based on a number of facts and the guaranteed maximum price is one of those. So at any rate, we're moving forward. We'll take care of it. Uh, as far as the jail contractors meeting, I, I provided you the list. I won't go into all the details, but things are moving along. Tom told me yesterday, we got good news that the, uh, Overhead doors for the Sally Port were coming today and everybody started installing them. That's about a month ahead of where we expected them. Uh, and so by now they should probably be down there working on those. Uh, uh, let's see, other highlights, uh, you know. Going back to your yeah. the, the issues at Port 19, Brad, I, I guess that's the one that really sticks out to me. You know, can I have to rewire the roof units? Actually, if we do what I just mentioned, no, we won't. Okay. But that was a, a concern that we had because right now all those ceilings are sealed. Yeah. 
That's fine. With not only detention material that mm -hmm. you can't get through for okay. all these purposes, but sheetrock and everything else. In other words, they put so another. If we tried to put a big four hundred there, there, we would have to go ahead and okay. rewire it. Okay. If we did the two hundred with the second one, we don't have to do that. Okay. I was, and I'll be honest, I wasn't in favor of doing two generators because going down the road, that's two maintenance contracts, that's two devices we have to keep running. However, given our options now. Yeah. And the fact that there's some positives if one if one has problems, your whole facility is not out. Uh, it may be a little bit more down the road, but it, it might be a better option in the long run. So uh, they've kind of convinced me that that's worth looking at. And then when you deal with that number 19 issue, yeah. that's, I don't even want to think about that. Yeah. Tom was about ready to pass out the other day when he was, as the electrician is saying, I, I can't get up in those ceilings now. We've sealed them. You know, they're it's a jail. You seal things so people can't get it get out and uh, our only option was to make conduit across the roof and Tom says we got a nice clean roof we'll screw it up and so you can see where these little yeah kernels cause a lot of problems so hmm. so yeah hopefully that won't come about okay uh let's see other other items uh Lloyd Builders was going to get with the landscapers to try to get some stuff done on that on the areas that we could do uh, other than that, the grid ceilings are all in, floor tile and, and carpet are in the offices and the jail and things are going well. On the courthouse side, uh, framers are pretty much uh, getting done on all three floors. Uh, they did cut the holes in the upper floor of the roof for the rooftop uh, HVAC units yesterday. So we have a couple of big new uh, holes to look at up and see the sky. They're probably covered by now, but uh, uh, things are continuing. Uh, if you if you drive by uh, the parking lot past its compaction yesterday, uh, Boyd uh, Excavation has been working on that, and they, like I told you in the work session, they had to take out 18 inches worth of of uh, wet soil and come back and compact it with some bigger rock and some AB3. Uh, but they did pass the compaction test that Caw Valley did yesterday, so it's ready. And Monday morning, first thing the uh, Concrete crews will be in there and start start forming that. They're going to start laying the. Uh, I guess you don't. I don't want to say the word. Pouring concrete, you don't pour it. You put it. Place in, it. Place it. Place it. Concrete's going to end up where it needs to be. So, uh, so that'll really that'll really uh, make things look good too. And we'll be able to get that done. And after a few days, we can drive on it again, so the public can come back in there. So, uh, things are things are progressing well, given the circumstances outside of the. The electrical issues. So, uh, 3400 Avenue, Greg mentioned that. And, and like he said, uh, barn screws will get in and re, and re or overlay that between rain and trail. They are heading uh, north. They started from Upland going north on rain. He, he just emailed me a little bit ago and said they should reach the county line today. Then they'll turn around and start back south. By midweek next week, they should have that done where they can move over to Detroit, uh, 3,400. So uh, earlier this week, I did send a letter out to the townships notifying them that they will not be receiving any uh, relief funds. Uh, we had originally sent them a letter that said, if you do get some money in uh, from the federal government that gets deposited to you, uh, that uh, we will plan to meet with you and help you through the process of what they can and cannot be spent on. Don't get excited, don't spend it until after we talk. Uh, we got a number of phone calls from, from them uh, asking questions. Well, the federal government decided instead of sending that money out to where they were, it went through the state. The state took the initiative to not give any to the townships for whatever reason. Maybe a good decision, I'm not questioning that. I just know that we were, we were informed that they will not be getting it. It's going elsewhere. So uh, just to clarify anything to them, I sent them out a letter and and uh, notify them that they don't have to worry about that. So, a uh, little fireworks issue that we had over on 2600 Avenue. I won't go into a lot of detail, but the last couple of years we've had, uh, there's a horse boarding uh, facility there, and we've had complaints, incidents go on on the 4th of July with fireworks. Uh, I talked to Sheriff Davis about it uh, after Barb and I talked, and then I talked to uh, Doug. Uh, interestingly enough, Doug and Sheriff Davis both had the same opinion that uh, the best thing was just have instruct Barb to not issue a permit to the neighbor. That, and what the problem is, the neighbor would set off fireworks and it would upset the horses or, or get them 
exciting. And this is a boarding facility, rather large boarding facility, rather large investment. Uh, it's not just a typical one or two horse operation like I had at one time. And uh, she boards some rather expensive horses, very concerned about it. So uh, we did draft a letter that Barb uh, signed as the issuing authority for fireworks permits. And Sheriff Davis went out and personally uh, gave that to the property owner earlier this week. They weren't very happy. Uh, I don't know whether anything will come out of it, but uh, it is what it is. So, in Hayes Township? I believe yeah, so. I yeah. Just right north of the interstate yeah. in the west. Uh, right. Uh, our resolution does have one clause, I think it's uh, sentence G, that says that anyone that's discharging fireworks must use due caution. Uh, for the neighbors and neighboring properties and things of that nature. That obviously has been a concern in the past. So uh, in this case, we're just not, not gonna allow them to shoot them across the street. They could get a permit and go anywhere else if they, they can legally do it. So uh, I got a, an email from Gene at the fair board. They would like to come in next week and talk to you. Uh, I, I don't know exactly what it's about, but I, I suspect it's uh, over the frustration of delaying and not having fair all back to them. I've, I've told uh, told her and she's told kept the fair board informed of where we're at and uh, I told her that nobody could be more frustrated than we are but it is what it is so um, I'll see if they can come in work around what the agenda is with Barb and I do that and then the last thing obviously Mr. Uh, Wright Bruce Wright our appraiser is retiring effective June 30th I think we're having a his office is having a little going away thing next week for him and uh I've got a card here that I'll have you guys sign today and we'll give to him. And he has been with us for 14 years. So we want to wish Bruce well and with his future endeavors. So that's all I've got. Okay, thank you. Doug. No, I don't have anything. Thank you. Okay. I'll go on to notices and communications. We did have just a couple of things that we received. Um, John Nachman has sent uh, an invitation and just a make us aware this is actually for the Dixon County Republican Party but they're having their annual picnic July 10th at Old Abilene Town there'll probably be things in the newspaper about that in that attendance the county news which is a national publication we received that newspaper also Ingrams has sent out uh, their monthly magazine and it's just on the fastest growing companies in the Kansas City uh, area was would there be anything else that any one else has received that want to bring up I might mention that I will be next Friday I don't know going to be attending we need to put it on the website the uh, uh, for July's the, the, bar yeah, barbecue okay I don't I know you won't be there Lynn but correct yeah Ron's going to be there we need to get it on the website okay I know the Dixon County EDC is going to have a their kickoff, but I think that's July 10th or something like that. A little further down, we'll get that on the website when, when it gets a little closer. Okay. Uh, we do not have any resolutions to discuss. No unfinished business. On other business, we need to consider the appointment of William Lorson. This is to fill the vacant position on the Banner Township Clerk. And Barb, I guess they sent you notification that he would accept that position. Yes. When they came in for their budget meeting, they gave Jeannie a letter stating that they recommended him to fill the position. Okay. He's willing. Okay. And we need to do that by motion. So is there. I'll make a motion. Second. We have the motion and the second to go ahead and appoint William Lorson. To the vacant position of the Banner Township Clerk. Any other discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The only item we have left is um, we have had budget hearings that have taken place and we're kind of to the place that we need to um, kind of bring that uh, a little further along. Um, this actually officially would not take place uh, until August but it is something that notification has to be made in the newspaper, and that's something that Barb would take care of in advance in July. But before we get to that part, we've had our hearings, and we need to be able to 
um, offer some direction to our finance director uh, as as far as um, what all is involved. Um, either Brad or Janelle can kind of handle this, but one of the things the legislature has changed kind of a, a ruling or put a notification process, and it, it appears that we would. Um, would you just want to cover that, either Brad or Janelle, between the two of you? Um, what that involved, so we know. So, uh, Senate Bill 13 was a change this year that uh, did away with the tax lid, but put some requirements in place that, uh, uh, with a goal in mind, that all government agencies remain uh, revenue neutral. This is a buzzword that's being used. So, what that means is we're not supposed to be able to raise our raise our mill levy uh, or, or take in any more revenue than what we did the previous year. With the changes, uh, if we do increase, we're required to have an additional budget hearing to explain that. And then the county clerk is required to send out notices on behalf of every taxing entity that is increasing uh, above what they did the previous year, essentially. This year, we're given a free pass so we don't have to send out that notice to every taxpayer, every taxpayer, I stress that, uh, but we do have to publish it on our website, and I assume in the newspaper, I think. So we're given kind of a free pass this year because of the the, the time timing as far as the legislative session and it going into effect. So uh, the thing we have to consider that, that obviously raising taxes is a concern. Nobody wants to see that. However, uh, this the, the statute kind of uh, puts the lasso around us that if we do lower taxes, uh, then the following year, we are restricted to that new rate. And say we get some money in that we have a good year in, in sales tax or what have you, and we have a good year. Uh, and so the, we leave it at the, where it is, and then we have a big expense or a disaster or something the following year. We can't raise taxes without those notifications going out and, and those things happening. So uh, there's some concerns there. So I think, uh, and I'll turn it over to Janelle, but I think our goal is to try and keep revenue neutral or the, the mill levy neutral uh, not raise anything substantial uh, but at the same time to protect our interests across the county not lower anything and restrict ourselves moving forward because it does put you in a very restrictive and uh, state where you are, would not be able to increase your mill levy if something substantial really come up that we had to and i would agree with brad and the uh, budget seminars that the state held that was a recommendation as well and and, and we're not asking to increase it significantly obviously because like brad said we don't want to increase taxes it's it does protect us for this year in case the assessed valuation does come out differently and that's a possibility but next year as well and going forward because uh, prices keep going up we see that our budgets, uh, you know, as we've gone through them, we've tried to make sure that they're staying pretty steady, but we do have some increases in, in some of the budgets and it's primarily salaries and benefits. And we've talked about that to, to retain and bring in new employees. So, uh, and also keep our, our cash on hand at a, at a certain level. So that's gonna be my recommendation is that, that we do increase it slightly and hold both hearings just to protect our interests, so. Hypothetically, you know, moving forward, one thing that changes almost every year is salary and benefits. Uh, and, and I won't go into why that is, we all know. But moving forward, if we if we stay at the same mill levy, unless our uh, appraised or assessed growth increases at the same rate as what our, our salary and benefits are, right. we wouldn't be able to levy enough taxes to keep up with that increase. So that can be a little bit problematic. So I. I don't know what will come out, come out of come out of it in the future. Uh, I think this is one way that the legislature, you know, and I'll go back and say the the tax lid thing was all window dressing on behalf of the legislature, made them look good. Uh, I think this is their way of stepping back from that and still making them look good. And at some point, they're probably going to bow out of this. I don't know, but you know, I think that's why you get elected at the local level and it gets why city commissions and school districts get elected at the local level to manage the local taxes and uh, they've taken that control out of your hands so mm -hmm. well and this is the first year since they've crafted that legislation and as they were doing that you know it does sound good in intentions and hypothetically but but the other variable too that that we're faced with 
is right now some of the supplies for materials and just your things that you would operate on, um, fuel that impacts the asphalt, some of the prices, and we've gone over road and bridge, the steel prices, and some of the delays that you have in receiving materials. Um, it makes it a pretty tough year because we do not know what degree of increases we're going to be faced with road and bridge. Um, the probably the wage part is big, but it's a little bit more predictable um, because typically we've um, we've kept a low percentage as far as the increase as far as the wages are concerned. Um, specifically, what do you need from us, Janelle? As far as there's probably two or three issues. So if we go ahead and kind of do this per issue to kind of get to the end, or you, go ahead, Craig. No, and, and I see the problem here. We won't know what our assessed valuation is until after we've done our budget, correct? We won't know the final assessed yeah. until November. Yeah. yeah. It's always after the fact. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we, if we don't go above, I mean, or don't do the max, and we come in at less, and what I'm going to the school district, you can always authorize it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to spend it. But you don't have to spend it. Right, right. They're going off of the July estimates, and that's that's what, and they knew that when they wrote the bill, you know, so. That's the way it'd be next year, though, too. You want Absolutely. To, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's not going to change, so. It's just an added step. I, I, and I hopefully still, we won't be off by more than 1%. I mean, I, I don't know what to. 1% is kind of what we went into this yeah. before, right. you know, before, so. Mm -hmm. Which is good, but you know, I can come back with a budget or a mill levy increase or a, a final summary with a slight increase, you know, like we've talked. I can also come in with it a little bit smaller, but the, the question I have is the request from the sheriff, you know, where you're comfortable with that. And I think I have that, so that's good. We've talked about the outside organizations, leaving those in there. I will double check and make sure that the increases that are being proposed for the step plan comes in where we need those to be. So, and the outside agents agencies just um, just an example of four or five of those, just kind of for public benefit. Um, so they know I and Central Kansas Mental Health Board is one I'm on. Mm -hmm. um, well, you know, Central Kansas. Well, federal regional isn't though. It's part of the or, right. But the earlier went down by eight thousand. The conservation district, the free fair, the tri county fair, the historical society, uh, OCCK, and the economic development corporation are the outside organizations that we allocate funds to. So. And typically, they don't rely entirely upon us, but right, they do touch our county and are involved and so. Right. So then on the salary and wages aspect, um, what numbers to plug in for that are we? So we proposed a pay plan that uh, it, it starts out at a seven and runs down to a three by the by the higher end wages. Asking how much money is it gonna cost? Oh, how much money is it gonna cost? That's what I think you're asking. Mm -hmm. Let me, I gotta find my spreadsheet. Right. I mean, I didn't want to interrupt. No, no, no. Dollar number. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cut through the chain. Give me the dollars. But while you're looking that up, the health benefit part of it, um, we're somewhat fortunate from what I understand that it's remained it's be minimal. kind of a minimal amount, which every few years we thought it was gonna go up significantly and it never. And um, I know one of the things they do is promote good health practices um through their system so the pay plan total increase make sure i get the right numbers here for everything is more or less don't don't say it's final approximately right. yeah. approximately it's less than four hundred thousand. it's 375 probably for everything the increase amount the increase yes okay i need to make sure i've got that that number correct and that does not factor in additional employees? No, it does not. Okay.
So I can bring those numbers back to you uh, and we can review them. The, the deadline that I need to let Barb know is July 20th. So we can get uh, the information out. So you can bring a report next week and the week after. <laughs> Kind of fine tune that. What you're really looking for today, though, some guidance on what to what to put in and what not. Exactly. And, and really, the important thing is to add any added person. Right. Because well, that's going to be the so highest. So we can cost. see what that final number looks like. Yeah. yeah. So on the jail and the sheriff's department. Mm -hmm. um, on the jail, there's what currently 17. There are 17 positions. Fun positions. Oh, and right. I don't know that we would need additional there but we might look at what would happen if we would put two additional ones in that position well, no, you wouldn't have to have, let them hire but i mean have the money there available right that's i think that's true so yeah mm -hmm. so because uh, i'm i made the jail different deal but if they go over we have to approve everything is that for the jail too or just sheriff's department yeah, that's for everything so, i mean if they spend more than they everything has to come for us to be approved right let's say right now yeah yeah because typically once they transition into the jail, they can see how the operation of the jail is going and if there's any nuances that we didn't anticipate. The, the technology and the layout should have created some efficiencies, even if there are a few more right. uh, inmates than what we've experienced before. Right. So we'll add in two in the jail and what about on the sheriff's side? Well, we did have some discussion with the sheriff and and I mean, he indicated that he needed additional deputies and um, but but they also I, I mean, my take on it was they have what they want to achieve, but we don't have to do everything the first year or look at everything and kind of do it step by step and see how it goes. Mm -hmm. But I don't. I don't know, Ron or Craig, do you? Uh, I, I guess I, I feel that when I asked the sheriff, I think he'd rather have a promotion, which I know that's probably only minimal, mm -hmm. or by, I mean, only what I'm going to be, but I think I'd be, I'm comfortable not adding yeah, any more staff right now to the sheriff's department. You know, if he wants to promote somebody, you know, move the people around and the civil processors. Um, that might be something we'll get to look at and what are we talking So you're talking maybe 30,000 for two civil processors? Well, it mentioned one part, and it's part-time, isn't it? Yes, yes, there wouldn't be no benefits or anything like that. So, okay. It's at 15 bucks an hour. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't really- A good place to start and see how it goes. Yeah, there. there's two openings now in the Sheriff's Department, and they thought they were gonna be able to fill one reasonably soon. Because if they are part-time like that and they run out of money, they could quit using them and go back yeah. to the deputies. Worst case scenario. Right. It yeah. all depends on who you can find to work and how much they want to work. And yeah. yeah. A lot of variables. Well, like 15 bucks an hour, that didn't get a vehicle in for them. And sure. Right. Well, and that's the other thing in the capital plan. Are you comfortable with what we've got in there in the capital plan? Is there any changes that you could see on that? Just how long the frame lasts. Okay. Well, and the one, I mean, one of the areas we looked at, there are quite a few vehicles that would be coming on in the next year or two, and, and that's something now there's a disruption as far as the supply. Yeah. And so, you know, we, we really have kind of an unusual year ahead of us. We do. And, I mean, it's... Um, might be able to budget for them, may not be able to get them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So... Um, do you want them to go ahead and reach out and find a timeline at least when they can order it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. And they did kind of touch on that earlier that they may go ahead and um, they, they said everybody's going to have to kind of get in line on that. But I, I, I think we have to be kind of aggressive in that regard. Right. Right. Hmm. So I'll bring in a couple different scenarios next week and you can take a look at it when more of the changes are and then we can make a final decision and move forward. Yeah, because we'll have two more meetings before the budget has to be, so we'll be back. Mm -hmm. And then you factored in some of the reclassification as far as the pay. Was that when the part you discussed on salary and wages, did that factored that in or is that a, in addition on the Sheriff's Department? You may want to 
I'm gonna review your it. numbers and yes. double check and recheck. Yeah. Then is that something too that we'd visit with uh, Diane about on HR? So so there's still a lot of mm -hmm. information to gather right. and go in. Um, okay. This Does that give you enough to I think so. come on, or is there any other comment or input? I will. Be, I don't. I'm bringing it up right now, but you know, Jack shop classifications for the correction officers. They need to work with Diane to get the, that in the perfect they want, and a little more. I mean, there was only two or three sentences they had what they needed for training. Right. To move up, so I like to see that in the scope of their work. That can be later. I mean, it doesn't have to be implemented. Right. And and you know the age-old dilemma that we run into every year. Uh, people do want a, a level taxation portion of it, and we all pay property taxes. And there's sales tax that does support it, and there's you know some franchises and pipeline and so on, some things that could factor in. But people always expect more services and, you know, especially in law enforcement, we want them to be able to operate and to bring the safety factor for our, for the uh, county. So, um, you know, we're, we're trying to weigh all the, the variables and make some good decisions and look out for the county on the, more than just the short term, but the long term, and and also you know consideration to the taxpayers. Is there anything else that you would like to see that you need to, to make some final decisions? You might confirm that on the sheriff's department on the on the deputy level on if there is. Um, I wasn't quite sure where the openings were on that and. Um, I think it's patrol, well, a sergeant and patrol. Sorry. Okay. Can do. Anything else for the meeting today? Then I did get, uh, after the meeting last week, I got several emails from employees that wanted me to pass on their appreciation for the premium pay. They were very much appreciated your action on that. So, thank okay. you. We were able to do that through the relief fund relief fund and speaking about it your pick up i ran off a couple of emails we got okay. you don't have to get them now i mean i i just like didn't have time to go get them so, oh on the same thing yeah yes yeah, i forgot about that too brad thank you brought it up okay i'd move we adjourn i'll second that we have the motion and the second to adjourn any other discussion all in favor say aye aye, aye. opposed motion carries we're adjourned